all right guys in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to create a dope progress bar and essentially the goal of this whole video is to give you a ready to use asset that you'll be able to use over and over again and that way if i drop more episodes like that you're gonna have a huge library of assets and you'll be able to cut your editing time but if you don't want to do any of that you can always go to my store and grab ready to use assets for example motion essence has 140 of them and only right now if you get the pack you're gonna get a bonus pack as well this is a limited time offer and only for 100 people so either first 100 people get it or the time runs out so just hurry up and with that being said we're gonna get straight into adobe after effects so that's what we're gonna be creating and imagine having this in your project panel whatever you need you can always customize it however you want change the colors or change the text so for now i'm gonna hit Control n in order to create a new comp and we're gonna create an 80 by 1920 vertical full hd i'm just gonna rename to animation and this is gonna be extremely simple to create so right off the bat i'm gonna head over to the rounded rectangle tool and all we need to do is just create a shape like that i'm gonna recenter probably just adjust a bit like so and for starters we're gonna change the color to dark gray let's hit ok and we're just gonna rename it to frame next thing we need to do is basically grab the rounded rectangle tool again and i'm just gonna read a bar like that let's recenter and make sure to put it below over here i'm gonna rename it to bar also i'm gonna recenter the anchor point and what we want to do is turn on the stroke and we're gonna turn off the fill so here we kind of want to pick a color that is bluish like a very bright blue let's hit ok and then what we need to do is basically hit ctrl d and i'm gonna rename to bar loading so here i'm gonna turn on the fill and I'm gonna take the picker and grab the color from the stroke. So now we're gonna be able to turn off the stroke and we're gonna have our loading bar. So for this, I'm gonna decrease the size a bit, just like so. You can uncheck constraint proportions and adjust it manually over here. All right, so we're trying to aim for something like that. I'm also thinking about changing the stroke width. Maybe four would be better. And then what you wanna do is head over to the bar loading and we're gonna apply the effect linear wipe. I'm gonna change the wipe angle to minus 90 and I'm gonna keyframe transition completion. Let's hit you, move forward, and actually I'm gonna drag that keyframe here. I'm gonna go back and let's change it to 100%. Okay, so that's what we have. We can actually use a graph here. So I'm gonna hit F9, go to the graph editor. I'm gonna fit the graph and let's go ahead and actually create a peak on the left, just like so. All right, so that's pretty cool. You also gotta remember that the linear wipe is going across the whole screen. So it starts from here and ends here. So that way we're almost at the peak and we don't really see anything over here. So you can always just, I don't know, create a keyframe over here, then right at the end over here. Let's go back and we can delete the last one and the first one. So that way it's gonna start kind of properly. I'm gonna apply the graph again. Let's see. Yeah, way better. All right, also I'm thinking about taking that frame. I'm gonna hit P. I'm gonna create a keyframe for position and we're just gonna create a movement going from the left. So something like that, but we also need to apply the intro graph. So if I go to the graph editor, you're gonna notice the peak on the left. So that's what we have. And also it's quite important to go to the modes and we're gonna change the track mat. I'm gonna select these two bars and I'm gonna use frame as a track mat. Make sure to enable the visibility again because it's gotten turned off and that way everything stays within the frame. All right, so now we need the text. You can grab the type tool and I'm gonna type in progress. You can type in whatever you want. I'm gonna resize it and then I'm gonna recenter. Let's put it somewhere here right above the bar. And what I'm gonna do is head over to, to that value, to the tracking or whatever it is. We're just gonna spread it out a bit, just like so. And now what I would like to do is also change the track mat to frame, and I'm gonna apply that Apple text animation. So for this, like always, I'm gonna open up, go to animate, I'm gonna choose position, and then we're gonna change the value over here to minus 100. I'm gonna go to add and here you wanna pick opacity and also we need to grab one more value which is gonna be blur. So here we wanna set it to 20 and then opacity to zero. All right, since it's done, we can head over to the range selector one. And what I'm gonna do is open up advanced and we're gonna change the shape to ramp up. Now make sure to change ease low to 100% and then ease high to minus 50. All right. And now we can head over to the offset in range selector one. I'm gonna set it to minus 100%, keyframe, move forward, and we're gonna change to 100%. So that way we get a very nice subtle Apple style text animation. We just need to adjust the timing a bit. All right, let's see now. Goes very slow. 
I actually like that the animation of the text is finishing whenever the bar finishes as well. Perfect. All right, so next thing we need is basically the ellipse tool and I'm gonna create a circle in the middle. Let's recenter, and then I'm gonna take the color from the bar and also with that layer selected, I'm gonna grab the pen tool and we're just gonna create a check. Something like that should do. You can make sure it's in the middle. Then what I'm gonna do is head over to our properties. I'm gonna turn off the fill and I'm gonna turn on the stroke. Now let's bump up the stroke bit. And what you wanna do is basically change the line cap to round and also line join. So before and after. Now what I'm gonna do is put it in the middle over here and actually I'm gonna make one adjustment which is shortening that line and maybe this one as well. Okay, so here I'm gonna rename it to check and I'm gonna create a keyframe for position and also rotation. Let's move back and we're just gonna drag it downwards. I'm gonna also rotate it like that and I'm gonna select all hit F9 and go to the graph editor. So here from this you wanna create a peak on the left. Let's just do it like that. Really nice but extremely slow so we're just gonna speed it up a bit like that. And also I'm gonna take the whole thing and move it forward. And also I would like to have it a bit higher so we're gonna go overboard. Alright we're pretty much ready to start spicing it up. So obviously we're gonna use a lot of light sweep. So for this I'm gonna start with the frame. Let's apply the effect CC light sweep. And here what you want to do is change the edge thickness to 2. I feel like when it's small it's looking more minimalistic and we're gonna probably drag it somewhere here. Then I'm gonna change the shape to smooth, I'm gonna increase the width and I'm gonna probably take the color from the bar. Ooh, that's looking nice. Let's see the original. Okay, I think we're pretty much set with the color. We might actually want to go for something stronger. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna change it like that probably a bit better. Now let's go ahead and copy the light sweep effect and I'm gonna apply it to our bar. Here what I would like to do is change the light reception to cutout and we're gonna bump up the width. Alright we just need to make sure to set that center somewhere here. Then I'm gonna copy this go to the bar loading and I'm gonna apply it here as well. Alright here what I would like to do is change the edge thickness to zero and I'm gonna bump up the sweep intensity. So we kind of want to make the most intense part at the end. So now we got a nice gradient over here. And also we're gonna be applying deep glow over here, but it's gonna happen in a moment. Oh, the camera died. All right, let's scroll out at this point. So what I'm gonna do next is basically go to our progress. Actually, we can rename it to text and I'm gonna apply CC light sweep again. So here we kind of wanna set the edge thickness to one. So it's not gonna be that intense. And also we're gonna be changing the light reception to cut out. So that way everything disappeared. So we need to make sure that our center is literally somewhere in the middle of the text. I'm gonna bump up the sweep intensity, increase the width, and also we're gonna take that color from here. And something I forgot about is also going to modes and changing the track mat in our check to frame. So that way it's just gonna pop from here. Okay, this is really nice. Also that check should be behind the bar. So I'm gonna put it right here. So that way it's gonna stay behind, which is pretty cool. And here as well, we're gonna apply CC light sweep effect. So let's go ahead, find our center just like so. And here I think we're gonna leave the color white and we might play around with the values just a bit. All right, this is looking really nice. I think I'm gonna leave it like that. All right, I'm gonna go back to our bar loading and here we're gonna apply deep glow. All right, it's extremely visible in the beginning. So for this, I'm gonna adjust the light sweep. So I'm just gonna drag it towards the right and also I'm gonna decrease the width. Okay. That is actually giving a very nice look. All right, I think we're pretty much set for adding adjustment layers. So for this, I'm gonna right click, go to new adjustment layer. And this layer is gonna be called exposure. I'm gonna add the effect. And here, what you wanna do is basically alt click the stopwatch and I'm gonna type in wiggle 5,0.3. And this is gonna give us a nice blinking effect and we need another layer. So for this, I'm gonna head over here, adjustment layer, and we're gonna rename to noise. I'm gonna apply the effect and here you wanna set it to eight and uncheck use color noise. So this is gonna give us a very nice vintage look. Absolutely love it. Then we can actually create a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna probably drop it below over here and it's gonna be called light sweep. All right, now we got the effect. We can actually bump up the sweep intensity, also the width. 
Okay, this is really nice. I'm gonna change it to smooth. And what you wanna do with this is basically create that pass by effect. So for this, I'm gonna keyframe center. I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna make sure that it's fully to the right so we don't see that. And then I'm gonna go back and we're just gonna drag it towards the left. Okay, so that's what we have. It's very, very slow. So we're gonna speed it up. Okay, this is actually really nice. I'm gonna make sure that the timing is right. And then what I'm gonna do is create a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna rename it to my favorite effect, which is posterize time. We're gonna add posterize time and I'm gonna set it to 16. All right, this is gonna give us that nice choppy look, kind of like from the cartoon. And as for the last component, we need curves. So for this, we're gonna create a new adjustment layer again. I'm gonna rename it to curves. And what you wanna do is basically drag the shadows a bit lower. Okay, this is extremely moody vibe. Looks absolutely fire. Also, I think we should use opacity keyframes. So it's nicely fading in. So for this, I'm gonna hit T, create a keyframe, move back, and we're gonna change it to zero. So here we're gonna right click keyframe assistant and easy ease. Okay, really nice. I'm just thinking about changing the momentum for the check. So I'm gonna click here, hit you, and I'm gonna probably move it backwards a bit. Actually, this is looking really nice whenever the bar is loading up. Then we got the check in the center. All right, so now my favorite part, which is turning on the motion blur. One thing though, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna probably speed it up just a bit. All right, here we got the animation on the actual reel, which is looking absolutely fantastic. I got a cut over here, but let's see that now. This is literally perfect. And let me just apply a zoom out effect just to spice it up. Yo, that's looking so good. So that way you got a ready to use asset. So here we got our animation. So essentially, if you want to import this animation whenever you need, all you need to do is just delete everything that you got in the project panel apart from the animation and also apart from the solids that were used. So for example, here we got adjustment layers, so make sure not to delete them. So after you've deleted everything apart from these things, you just save this file. So you just go here to file, save as, you create a new file out of it. And then whenever you need it, you just right click, go to import, file, and you look for the file you saved. Extremely simple and will save you a bunch of time. You can always change the colors, you can change the text. This is an extremely cool way to take advantage of these ready to use animations. All you need to do is just open it up and drag it on the timeline. And you can also spice it up however you want. Bro, a light sweep effect is actually working for everything. You can create the worst animation ever and then you just drop a light sweep on this and it looks fantastic. And here we got so much freaking stuff. Let's take Graph Editor, for example. This is such a cool thing. Obviously, we need to adjust it a bit. And also, you can always go in here and you can change the text. Customize. Should be probably a bit smaller. So these types of animations are such a time saver and you should have them always in your project panel. Hopefully the tutorial was insightful and yeah, just don't waste time, just create these animations. Also make sure to check out the video on the screen and check out my store over here. We're gonna wrap it up here. Cheers guys.